Hi, welcome back. This is Ken. Welcome to our little section of the internet here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about putting photographs on leaves. But not so much the photographs themselves, because I'm still learning that. I've already got a couple of things going here, so I'll explain as I go along. But uh, one of the biggest problems in uh, photographing putting photographs on leaves, despite the fact that they're a great craft item like in Christmas cards and other, you know, kind of memorabilia and so forth. A great science experiment. But one of the things that happens is that once you make the photograph, over time it will bleach out uh, in any continued sunlight. So the challenge for me was to try and come up with a way to make this uh, the imaging much more permanent and I think I've got a pretty good uh, uh, result out of it. So let me go through it a little bit at a time here. These are the images and you'll see this on the website. Uh, you'll see the images that I did. Uh, I got a piece of glass on here so I want to be a little bit careful. Uh, but you can see there's a couple of clip arts and a couple of actual photographs. Well, let me show, well, let me, uh, let me move the glass first. I have not seen these images yet, so I don't know what, what they're going to look like. Now they're going to stick for one thing. Hold on just a second. Now what I normally do when I when I do these is that I uh, use inkjet transparency uh, but I use two uh, two of the same uh, on the inkjet I use two uh, images so this is a little bit more contrast and then you can see uh, So in this clip art one, there are two, actually two images, kind of just taped together. Uh, oh, the images came out pretty good. I'm, I'm not unhappy with that at all. So let's take a look at. This is the, the one in the clip art. And here's the, the young lady. Uh, these are just images taken from the internet. So, like I say, this is not about the the photography on the leaves. It's about making that image permanent, so that this can go out in the sun again and not bleach. So, let's go through the, the two solutions. First of all, uh, uh, any cook will recognize the word blanche, and that's what we're going to do in this first solution. Now, it's blanching is normally done. Uh, with boiling water. Now in this case we're going to add just a pinch of baking soda. And when I say a pinch I mean I really just a pinch. We just want to make it slightly alkaline. And that's just regular old regular old baking soda. Nothing magical there. Now that that solution is now ready. Um, and we're going to blanch it for one to two minutes and but I want to make up the second solution which is where the magic happens and in this case very very simply I have 190 milliliters of water and you can obviously this and this this blanching by the way can be done in a saucepan I'm using beakers in very small scale here to just to kind of show you and I have 10 cc's a uh, 10 milliliters of glycerin and this is just regular glycerin. So it's a 5% solution of just regular old glycerin from the soup, from the, uh, hard, from the uh, drugstore. Now the other ingredient is copper sulfate. And what we're going to be doing is the, in the blanching, as long as it's alkaline, it will preserve the color of the image. 
make it continue to make it a nice green. If it's acidic, it will wind up uh, making the image very dull, very dull and uh, quite poor. But if you add too much alkalinity, uh, it will make the uh, leaf mushy, and we don't want to do that. So just a pinch. Now in the so I put the glycerin in the in the water, so it's now five percent glycerin in water. I'm going to add copper sulfate, which is, I've transferred this from uh, the box that it came in as root killer. It's available everywhere. I'm sure you've all, you've all seen copper sulfate. Now we're not going to add very much. We're going to add just enough to have the solution blue. Now this, for that solution, the only time you need to boil it is the first time to get the air out of it. Other than that, it can be done cold. So, I'm going to use my high-tech stirring device. And you can see that there is a, a slight tint now of blue. So that says that the copper is in solution. So now let's blanch two of these We'll do this image of the of the young lady. Now this is on Japanese knotwood, uh, knotweed. I'm sorry. Uh, so there's still I still have a lot to learn about this uh, imaging. But let me let me put put this in here and again with another high tech. And I'll put the second. I'll put the second image in as well. So we're just going to blanch this now for a couple of minutes. So blanching now is going to enhance the, the green of the chlorophyll very nicely. Now actually I'm going to I'm going to turn the heat off because we don't really we don't really need it. It's going to enhance the the green color, the chlorophyll, and it, it's going to uh, also hydrate the uh, the leaf itself. This may be difficult to show you. Now, what's going to happen is that the chlorophyll uh, part of the plant has a magnesium uh, metal in the center, which uh, of the uh, of the uh, cell structure. So it allows the bleaching to occur. So if we leave that magnesium in there, it's going to continue to bleach when we take it out. However, by putting it in the copper sulfate, we're going to replace that magnesium with copper and it is not light sensitive so after blanching this is going to be a little bit hot to... oh come on let's see if we can show it it's hot but you can see the color is really still pretty nice and green. So now I'm going to put that in the copper sulfate solution and glycerin. And we're going to just leave it there for a couple of minutes. Now that copper is now replacing the magnesium. We'll do the same thing with the other one. I love working with hot hot materials. Just be careful. You know, this is this is really common sense stuff. Alright, and there's our there's our clip art. And hopefully this is all pretty clear to you. And we're gonna put that in as well. So this is really kind of interesting technology. Um 
And it's, despite the fact that it's so simple, it has taken me a lot of experiments to get to this point. Uh, so at this time, I've been able to do images and put them back out into the sun for up to four days and no visible signs of uh, any kind of bleaching. So I can't say that it's archival because I don't have a hundred years of history behind it. But I can tell you this, that it is really remarkable. It, and as far as I know, this has not been accomplished uh, so far uh, from what I've seen. And uh, I've seen some you know, pretty interesting websites that do leaf photography, but they all seem to have the same problem. So after just a few minutes in, in the copper sulfate solution, oh, this is really is warm. Now, if it's if it's if it's particularly blue, you can rinse it in water, but this this is not has not turned blue. So that's essentially that's essentially done. So now you can just kind of lay it out. And what I would normally do is to take this image and put it on a paper towel and put a little bit of weight on. Now, a couple of things that I've thought about, I just want to try in order to keep the, uh, the image nice and flat. But it will it will kind of stay flat anyway. But there it's come out and there's no particularly blue. So the magnesium has now been replaced with the copper and it is it is basically finished. So that's now relatively light insensitive. I thought about a couple of things. It seems like one of the areas of interest has been to embed these in uh epoxies. Uh, uh, this doesn't seem like, that seems like a lot of effort and I'm not sure that I want to go that, would want to go that route. However, I did think about not necessarily preserving for the light sensitivity, but for presentation is to use uh, a little bit of paraffin wax diluted with some mineral oil and warmed up and then taking that image and dipping it in the paraffin wax just to put a thin layer of uh, paraffin wax over it. So that's a possibility. So uh, obviously uh, if you head on over to the website that's open source of course and there's no advertising it's it's a free website there's no nothing magical about it it's a it's a but the write-up is there and there's also some chemistry uh, and the, the video uh, is both uh, on the website and uh, on YouTube and uh, so if you're on the website obviously you would see the same video uh, but do read the write-up and uh, if you have ideas I'd love to hear them I, I just you know I think that leaf selection is important there are a number of things that uh, that I, I still have to learn and I'm I'm going to really work at it but I to me that's 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 quite an acceptable image for a, for a small you know for for a small leaf and uh, I I just think it's just a lot of fun so I think it's a great craft idea and uh, the comments are always always uh, accepted and, and I answer them all and I I do it as, in a very timely way so I hope this has been of some interest to you and uh, that that you'll give it a shot because I think it's really that much fun. So right now this is Ken and I appreciate your watching and head on over to the website if you're at YouTube uh, or if you're on the website uh, check out all the photos uh, because I've, there's a lot of information uh, on, the, on the website and I'll post the link. I'll also post a link to alternative photography which goes into a bit more about uh, leaf photography itself, but uh, like I said, this is really geared toward preserving the image. So hey, this is Ken. Thanks an awful lot for being with us.